and gentlemen, welcome to the shop, boys and girls, kids of all ages. Uh, what we have before us here is for that right there, not them, but that right there. Uh, we've got this mounted. I'm going to have to cut these off, and it looks like I'm going to have to offset this a little bit, but that's not going to be a big deal. I made a measurement. I got a mark here, and I got a mark here, a straight edge from the bottom of the deck, because I'm going to want an inch and a half. I'm going to want the same cut as that one. Why? I don't know. But these things are two different lengths. Is that crazy or what? And they got to be all the way in there. But anyway, got the chain, had the motor. These are the rear tires, which these are cute, by the way. This is the front tire, which is a heavy grip tire. Uh, I think it's going to pull just fine. I've got this on here. The sprocket was kind of tough because I actually had to cut a slot. Now what I'm going to do here is that this is steel. I'm going to weld this to the sprocket so it lines up good all the time. I've got it not perfect, but I believe it'll be perfect enough for what we're going to do. Uh, these are 9 teeth to 55 teeth, so we're not talking about a huge, huge speed, but it's still going to be pretty good. So the gearbox for the steering is coming in tomorrow. I've got some other stuff ordered, so this we're moving forward on this pretty good. Uh, I'm going to have to get this up <clears throat> from center line of this to there, from this mark, we're going to have to come up an inch and a half and then center of this and then we'll put this right here. We're going to take the tube notcher, we're going to notch this and weld this in. And we will put them on this and we'll weld them in like that. Now I made spacers to center the wheel up. <clears throat> I don't think I'll need, I'll have, I don't think that'll work. And you can see how crooked that is. But I don't think that'll work because I'm going to have to get it over after I cut these off. And after I weld those on and I cut those off. Uh, I probably won't be able to get these stainless steel lock nuts off of here again anyhow. They'll probably be galled. So. Now, I let, when I took these bolts out, I let all the air out of the tires. And uh, they're still pretty, with no air in them, they're still pretty steady. So, you know, and replacing, after I get these welders on, replacing this, I would like to go in there and tack on the studs on it too. And I might do that later, or the standoffs, so the chain goes on it like it's supposed to. So, and that's the configuration right there. Uh, and that's what's going to drive this little puppy. So that's pretty cool. And like I said, the motor's a nine tooth. So, all right. So what I'm going to be doing now is just to let you all know what I've already done. And I don't know if you can see the standoffs there. Uh, and I bolted them through with some quarter 20s. That kind of, it had a, five millimeters in them uh, so I put quarter 20 kind of tightened up the hole a little bit to help center it up so that's how I did that I cut these uh, 120 thousandths the standoffs all the way around and for some reason I still got a little side to side wobble but I can take that up probably with some uh, shims or take these back out, mark them, what I got to do to pull them in, and then cut on those standoffs a little bit more because maybe the hub itself is not perfect. But it's close. It's very close. And uh, once we get all this done, I'm going to want to get this motor. I'm going to come across here with a piece. And the motor is going to be like right here. Well, this, this is the front. The motor is going to be like kind of right here, but it's going to be on a hinge because it's bolted up right here. And I'm going to have a spring 
tensioner to keep tension on the uh, wheel at all times or on the or on the chain so that's what I got planned let's get to it and before we get to it this came in the mail today I hadn't really pulled it out yet it looks like it's packaged pretty decent it's heavy I know that oh yeah yeah, that's a quality piece right there. Loctited in screws. These will have to be drilled out for mounting. Because looking at the pictures, they're solid through. So, let's, uh, let's see how it runs. That's positive and this is negative. And that's pretty fast. That'll be good. Going that way. Going that way. Going that way. Beautiful. Yeah, that's a nice looking piece right there. It's heavy, big motor too. So that'll put out about 150 pounds of torque, which is more than enough. It's gonna be fitting right up here. And that's what's gonna turn the top of it. So that's gonna work out. Uh, I'm gonna have to measure this. I'll bore a hole and then I'll take uh, a key cutter and cut the three keys. This can be done with a drill and a file. Just so happens I have a set of uh, broaching, key brooches. So yeah, that's pretty cool. All right, so now let's get to it. All right, boys and girls, I took this over here on the tube notcher and I notched it out for the inserts right here. The reason I'm doing this is this is going to be a painfully long video and I don't want to bore anybody. So I got it like that. So with this measurement, if we was to put the wheel on it, there we go. If we put the wheel on it. I had marks on it, even with the deck. So I had to allow for the inch and a half up that I want. So the center out on this wheel is three and a quarter inches. So I went to center, plus the inch and a half up I needed, laid this on it, marked around it, and now I notched it. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna weld this on there. And I'm going to weld it, I'm going to make a uh, spacer to go in between these two so I can bolt it hard and solid. And uh, then that way the axle will go in and out real easily and uh, everything will be nice and straight. So I do have room enough to clear that now. So you can see that little bit of wobble in that sprocket. I'm hoping that's not going to be an issue, but I need to weld these washers on too, because on this way, it's pretty good. So that's going to keep them in check that way. The wobbling, now I did all the inserts or all the, the standoff pieces in there. They're all at, a, at an inch uh, 20 thousandths, dead on. It might be the rim itself it's a little bit out I'm gonna see if that's I don't think that's gonna affect you know the performance of this that's what so I've done so far that's what I'm gonna I've clean done. this up I'm gonna clean these up I'm gonna clean those up and I'm gonna weld them on that's gonna set the distance I have and then we will deal with the motor where the motor's gonna be the motor's gonna be somewhere right here and 
we're going to make a we're going to make a bracket and uh, I want to put a spring on it to keep tension on the chain at all times so we'll see how that goes all right guys we're going to get to it and get to welding this stuff okay so we got this clamped in here we got the axle nice and loose in there we got it all lined up we got it clamped down hard we're going to tack it there and there then we're going to flip it around put pressure down on this one and tack front and back and then i'll weld it all the way around that should have that as long as this thing goes in and out like that nice and smooth that's what we want well there's a bit of a bevel at the end of this thing but that's good and we're gonna want it to go right in there whoops I knocked that one out of there this one's still loose that's the reason I say we're gonna flip it around and and tack this one under pressure this one's under pressure right here so and then this one here we'll flip it around and do the same thing to that but that's how we're gonna do that then the wheel will center up with the spacers and we'll be done with that this is going to be the hardest part of the whole build right here. There's no doubt about it. Getting all this, the motor mounted and everything up, and you're going to have to whatever whatever bicycle you use, whether it's a, a BMX mountain or whatever that has shock absorbers or one of the straight ones, uh, whatever you're doing it with, if you're doing it at all. And like I said, you know, the weaselistic disclaimer, don't do anything I do. This is something I'm doing. So... I'm just showing you how I do it. Uh, it will be up to you if you decide to. There we go. That one there didn't look center to. If you decide to go this route, then that's going to be what you do and what you use as far as parts go. That's what I'm using right there. So. This is the hardest part, getting the motor mounted, getting the sprocket centered up is going to be tough. I'm not lying, I'm not kidding to you, it's gonna be a challenge. So, you know, be careful what you get into here. Uh, but the top part, that gearbox and everything we got right here, absolutely fantastic product, absolutely good piece. The only thing is, I think, and I'm gonna get y'all in here real close right quick. It doesn't have any mounting holes. These here go, they pass all the way through as solid metal. So you're literally going to have to drill mounting holes here, 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 and here. These are not mounting holes. These are the ones that clamp it together. They lock tight them on there for a reason which is fine. What I'm going to do, I'm going to center punch them, and I'll actually probably do a transfer punch on them. On each side, I will drill halfway in this side, halfway in the other side, so when I do, do drill through the other side, it'll be more uh, straight through. Could be done with a regular hand drill. Uh, I'll be doing it with a drill press, I could use the mill, but I'm going to use just a regular drill press, and it's a cheap Harbor Freighter there that I've had for going on 12, 14 years. I can't remember which, but it's the old steel one. It's not the aluminum one. It's all metal. It's all cast. <coughs> I think I paid $32 for it, and it's been so good. I just really hate to replace it with anything. You know how it goes. So, and let me back on out of here. But that's what we're going to have to do to mount that. That's no big deal. That'll be plates put up under it right here and then tied back into the top of that right there. And you'll see how I'm going to go in depth on this on how we're going to do this because that's very, that's like five to ten thousandths from three eighths of an inch. I have a three-eighths of an inch key brooch. Don't need a key brooch. You can go a file, work it slow, 
it can be done with hand tools. So the uh, let's proceed on. got it we got it all cleaned up it's cooled down now and that's a good fit right there so did it actually fit better a second ago I just ground these off and I heated them up and I guarantee you that's what it is but anyway, there you go. That's the kind of fit you want. It's still, when it heats up, it does that. So this is gonna be the leading front. We're gonna want the sprocket to this side. So we're going to get our two spacers here, which I'm not quite sure that that's gonna be the way it works now. It was. And oh, that's tight. I was going to put them all together, but. Uh. I guarantee there's enough room in there for those. Let me put this in this side in first. See if we have any more luck with that. It's not much, but I can guarantee you there shouldn't have be enough spring in there to get it in there. And I don't know why I'm trying so hard. Because it just basically take a little bit off of one of these. <sighs> So kind of what I'm thinking happened as the forks narrowed the farther up on them you want, which is not a problem. And I could have miscalculated, but I don't think I did because I had it fitting at one time. Uh, that's, that's not a problem. I want to cut this one. Yeah, no, I don't have much room there. I'll have to be that one. All right. Motor's getting a little weak. Or the capacitors are actually.
getting a little weak. And a little squash in is not going to hurt anything. So, if I have to tighten it up a little bit to get it all the way up, that's fine. So, let's see what we got right here. So, you can obviously tell I haven't fit this thing up yet. So, <laughs> it hasn't got to its final home yet so to speak. Okay. That's a pretty good fit. I'm pretty happy with that. Some of this is going to be trimmed off. That lock nut's not going on there, is it? See this how there's not a piece in between the bearings. You don't want this to tighten this up because it'll put pressure on the bearings or unnecessary pressure on them. And there that's snug. You could even tell the little bit of pressure I put on that. All right, that looks good right there. So, that's our front wheel assembly. Kind of like it. I'm gonna trim this bolt off here. don't need any extra hanging out to hang this and hang that so I like that so just to give it a look to see what we are looking at So if I was to come up, let's say an inch and a half on the back, if I had something that's an inch and a half or close to it, that's an inch and a half. It should level out pretty much if I got my measurements right and it looks pretty good. All right, so you'll have two wheels. 
got her on back here. So that'll be it. But I swear, it doesn't look like it. I guess it is. I guess it is. That's about what mine is. So yeah. Okay. So the motor and everything will be mounted up here. And that'll be the next thing we do. And that's and that gearbox. Like I said, this thing is just gonna pivot right like that. I'll get both the back tires on it. And uh, that little gearbox that I got right here, that's not gonna have any trouble turning that. So that's basically gonna go up there. It's all gonna be controlled remotely. So, okay. Please hit like and subscribe, guys. Give, leave me a comment. Uh, thank you all very much. All you subscribers are awesome. The, uh, and thank you all so much for watching. We're going to get this thing done pretty quick because I got most of the stuff ordered for it. So some of it's coming from China, which is going to take you know, 14 to 21 days to get here. So, but that leaves me time to get all this other stuff done. I still got to block this off and weld those holes up. But uh, yeah, and I'm still undercoating it with something, just like Russell said, and he put it in the post. Uh, there's a lot going on up under the deck and he's absolutely correct. Uh, but just to keep this thing, this is going to be my new favorite toy. Uh, to keep this thing around as long as possible, uh, I'm going to undercoat it with something and keep undercoating it, you know, as needed. And keep a good sharp blade on it and stuff like that. Because uh, it'll last a long time. We have to put a battery box and a control box to run all the wires and everything in. So that's no big deal. I got some of that here. We'll make a custom one if need be. But uh, yeah, come out good. Hit like and subscribe. Thank you so much for watching. This is going to be a really cool video. Y'all have a good day.